subscribe now and press the bell icon. Never miss an update. I shall be teaching you a line to you today. As we all know, you must be knowing that light is a form of energy which enables us to see objects around us. You can see the importance of the statement. If you close your eyes, you don't see anything around you. If you switch on during night, you see so many things around you. Now you are able to see the objects around you because of the light. The light is a form of energy which enables to see objects around us. The nature of light is electromagnetic. Light forms a very small part of a very wide electromagnetic spectrum. The range is only between 400 nanometer and 700 nanometer. It travels with enormous speed three ten for eight meters per second in free space. Of course, it has different velocities in different media. Now, see an object visible to eye is called source of light. A source of light may be luminous or self-luminous light, sun, star, burning candle, burning lamp, etc. May be non-luminous. For example, earth, moon, paper, you and I. Whether it is luminous source or non-luminous source, see, a source, please note, may be luminous or non-luminous emits light, gives out light in the form of rays. You must know what a ray means here. A ray is path along which light energy travels. We don't see light, strangely, though it helps us to see objects around us, we don't see light. And therefore it is realized by graphical representation. See, a 
straight line with a half. Now this straight line represents the path along which light energy travels. This arrow represents the direction of travel. Direction of motion. Now the source, however small it is, however small it is, emits light in the form of rays, group of rays. More commonly, 
isotropic function. Now, if the H speed is different in different directions, it is non homogeneous or unisotropic. Now, see light exhibits, light energy exhibits several properties <coughs> like reflection, refraction, polarization, interference, etc. The explanation of the observed properties on the basis of ray concept. Making use of the principles of geometry is called geometrical optics. And explaining properties, making use of the wave concept is wave optics or physical optics. Now, we will spend some time in with geometric optics. The first thing is the principle of rectilinear propagation of light. Now, this is a very simple, important concept. Rectilinear propagation of light. According to this, in an isotropic optical medium, I have told you what an optical medium is, medium in which light propagates. Isotropic optical medium is medium in which light has same velocity in all directions. See, light propagates. along the same direction though it is very often called same straight line it is more appropriate to say that light propagates along the same direction as long as the medium is same and the medium is as true now this can be very simply demonstrated say for instance you have say an arrangement like this say three cardboards like this if you arrange and if you keep a burning candle here and suppose make holes here pin holes see light from this light from this light from this now you are able to see only these holes on the same line if you displace a little if you displace a little like this say for instance if it is like this now light you will not be able to see because it does not travel like this, it travels like that. Now this can also be, we have an excellent device called a pinon camera. You can try this at home. See any box of this rectangular box like this. You have a ground glass on one page like this. Now, a small hole here, a pin hole, that is why it is called pin hole camera. Now, if you keep an object, any object, for that matter, you may have a burning man, you may have a tree, you may have a person. Now, light from here travels like this, light from here travels like this. With the result, you have an image. An object here, an image here. Now, we don't get the image like this in order to image we get. Then you have so many other, say, for example, shadows, eclipses, or direct consequences of rectilinear propagation.
Say for instance, if you have, let me suppose, a point object, a point source of an atom, and you have, let us suppose, an opaque point. Now we know that source gives out light, emits light in all directions in the form of rays. The rays represented, ray you don't see, we represent by straight and the arrow. See, like this, this is a ray. Now rays here fall here because it is open. We don't have this. We don't get light here. We don't get light here. If you keep a screen here, let's suppose. If you keep a screen here. Now we have a region, we have a region where we don't get light. Now that region is called shadow. That region is called shadow. Now here you get light. Here we get light. But we don't get light here. Now that is the shadow that is formed. <coughs> now that resembles the shape of the object. Now that is a consequence of the propagation of light. Now if you have an extended source, this is point source, this is extended source. Now if I have opaque object as before and I have a screen here. Now taking this point here, now you have the shadow here, for example, it represents like this. And you have the shadow here. See, you can see, since this is what we have here, to this part, no light at all from any part of the source. But here you get light from this part. I don't get light from this point. See this? Now this is called umbral vision. Now this is called panorama vision. Now if this were to be sun, let's suppose. If this were to be earth, let's suppose. If moon, which is going like this, happens to be here, we don't have probability, we have probability of Now if it is here, partially of Like that. So those are the elementary things that you know about <coughs> light in your earlier classes. Now we shall straight go to another important principle. See reflection of light. Reflection. Now light, you can have light like this coming from a source, but we represent graphically, let's suppose like this, falling on a surface. Now this is medium one. This is medium 2. Now medium 1 is transparent. Now this may be transparent or opaque. No, no, we have to notice that light is going from trying to go from one medium to another. Now at the surface. See actually you have to imagine, you have to imagine, let us suppose like this. This is the surface that I have been here. This whole thing is the surface. If light falls here, a part of it or the whole of it gets reflected. Now I shall ignore the other consequence. If it is water and air, a part gets reflected, a part gets going there, a part is absorbed. Three things happen when light falls on the surface. I ignore the other two, I take only this. The light that falls on the surface 
is called incident flight. If it is a beam of light, incident light, incident beam. If it is a single ray, it is incident. I will denote this x by plane of incidence. Now this is, let us say, reflecting some rays. It may be transparent, it may be opaque. Usually it is opaque. Now go. See, refracting surface is a plane, remember. It's a plane like this. And the incident light is a ray like this. It means at one point. It means at one point. Now the point where the incident ray means the reflecting surface is called a point of incidence. Now the ray that goes back, the ray that is sent back, is called the reflected ray. Reflected light, reflected ray. Now here, at the point of incidence, to the reflecting surface, I draw a perpendicular. That is called normal. Normal to the reflecting surface at the point of incidence. Now, here you have <coughs> normal is a straight line, ray represented by a straight line. So, you have two lines meeting here, they form the normal angle. Angle of incidence. So this angle between the incident ray, O A O, and the normal O L, is called the angle of incidence. Definition: Angle between the incident ray and the normal. Similar. So you have a ray here, a line here, a ray here, another line. So between these two lines, they meet here, they form an angle. So angle between the reflected ray, OB, and the normal OA is represented by R, the angle of reflection, the angle of reflection. So these are the terms that we come across in the process of reflection. Now the last can be stated like this. See for example, the first law goes like this. See it is law about reflection. So we are interested more of this light. Therefore, the reflected light <coughs> lies in the plane of incidence. Plane of incidence. Now, this is a slightly different way of expressing this. You must know what is meant by plane of incidence. Now this is a plane, this is a line. So this line lies here. Now if you have another, see, line like this. Now if you construct a plane, see these two are in the same plane. So once you have the incident ray, the reflected ray, a plane is always defined. See, what I mean is this. See if you have a point, draw a line. line line, line, line. You can draw infinite lines passing through your point. If you are given a line like this, you will draw a plane, this is one plane, this is another plane, this is another plane, another plane like that. Now here if you have two points, you cannot draw more than one line. 
In other words, two points fix a line. Now similarly, two lines, one like this, another like this, they determine, define a plane. Now this plane, see, plane of incidence here means that is the plane containing the incident plane. Incident ray. So I, I have the incident ray here, the plane normal here like this. So this is the plane. So the law states the light if it is falling doesn't go like this. Light is falling doesn't go like this. It goes only in this plane, in this plane. So that is the implication of that. So if light falls here like this, if you know this law, it will not go like this. Shine a torch light on a mirror, you can expect the direction on which it goes. Just as if you throw a ball like this, it will never go like this, it will never go like this, it always goes like this. So that is one. The second law is, once again, we concentrate on this angle. Now usually this is said like this, the incident ray, the reflected ray, Normal chronotic part of incidence lie in the same plane. It means the same thing. But better. Now the angle of reflection is equal to, it's always equal to the angle of incidence. Now these laws, we will spend a little time to see, use these things. See what is the use of these two laws. One is, see if you have a mirror like this, if you shine a light like this, how does it go back? These two laws help us to find out. Now, the first thing is, identify the point where it moves. That's the point where it moves, point of incidence. First step. Second step, draw the normal. Draw the normal. Now, these two will give you a plane. In this particular case, it is the board, plane board. See, plane with the board. Now, measure this angle. I construct an equal angle R on the other side. It goes like this. It goes like this. I repeat. Now, take a ray. Take a ray. Identify the point of incidence. Draw the norm. Measure the angle. Now, construct on the other side equal angle. It goes like this. It is geometric. Therefore, it is geometric to optics. Now, once again, mirror. Ray is falling like this. Now this is the point of incidence. Draw there the normal. This is the normal. What is the angle? I is to equal angle. That is equal angle. So it goes like that. You make it like this, it comes back. Draw the drop the ball, it comes back. Throw the ball, it goes back. Throw the ball, it goes back like like that. Now, what is the use of this? What is the use of this? See for instance, you are standing in front of the mirror. You see yourself. We call it your image. I want to locate the image of an object formed in a mirror using these things. The procedure is like this. Let's suppose this is the mirror. Mirror. This is the back of the mirror, front of the mirror, back of the mirror. So I keep an object, source, it gives out light in all directions, continuously in all directions. Now a ray, 
any way. You can take this rate and take this rate and take this rate and take any rate for that matter. Now that rate falls on the mirror here. Draw the normal. So these two decide a plane, measure this angle. On the other side, construct an equal angle. Now this is the reflected plane. Reflected. Now take another ray. See another ray, normal. This is the normal. Angle I zero. Reflected ray. This is how it comes back. R0. Now this is the reflected ray. This is the reflected. Now I have taken only two. You can take any number. See this is one. This is one. This is two. Places. Now after falling on the mirror, they come back like this. Now for an observer here, for an observer here, this ray and this ray, if you produce like this, let's suppose, if you produce like this, Here, like this. Now, this is what we call the image. What we take. Now you can repeat this. See, for instance, I will take another ray. See, here dash. Draw the normal. Measure the angle. Construct equal angle. Now this is how it goes. P dash. Now this is how P dash. You can repeat all trace in between, all trace in between comes back like this. If you keep your eye here, if you keep your eye here, though the rays come from this point, you feel they come from, you feel they come from this point. So this is called image. Now image. image, you know what it is, but what is the definition? It is the point where light rays after reflection, maybe refraction also, this is true for all situations, after reflection, meet or appear to meet See here, this is the reflected ray, this is the reflected ray, they don't meet, they don't meet, when produced, they meet, so they appear to meet. Now in that case, it is called virtual image, virtual image. Now there are other situations where, see for instance, for, for instance, you have, instead of this, plain mirror like this that we all usually use. Now imagine you are car mirror, airway mirror, it is not like that. It's not like that. You have the mirrors like this. You have the mirrors like this. We will come to it a little bit later. Now if you keep an object here, let's suppose, a ray goes back, a ray goes back. See here, incident ray, reflect, incident ray. This is reflected like this. This is reflected like this. So they meet here. Now this is the object, this is the image. Now they actually meet here. They meet here. That is real image. So images may be either real, when rays meet actually, or virtual. They meet when you produce them back. <coughs> You know, you can see, but you can't take up, obtain them on the screen. You can not only see, but also get them on the screen. See, the image that we have in our eye is real image, like that. The image that you see in a mirror is virtual image. Now, if you observe the figure, once again, now you can show that, 
see the same figure. I draw a simplified figure. Object, incident ray, OA, I suppose. It comes back in the same direction because I is normal. I mean, zero, all is zero. So it replaces another way. OB, norm, I, equivalent, R, it reflects. So this is the reflected ray, this is the reflected ray. They don't meet in front of the mirror. I produce them back. And this is the image. Same figure. Now observe, we know that this is normal, this is normal. You have normals like that. Now this is their parallel. Because see here this angle is equal to this angle. They are parallel. So this is transverse of normal. So these two angles, corresponding angles, corresponding angles. Now these two angles, again transversal, separate transversal, are equal. So if you consider this triangle, triangle formed by the image, image object, and any point on the mirror. See, we find that, <coughs> see, this is equal, this is equal, these two angles are equal. See, a side is common, therefore there are congruent triangles. Congruent triangles means this distance is equal to this distance. Now, what's the implication? The image in a mirror of an object is formed as far away in the mirror and the object distance. So, this is image distance, this is object distance. Therefore, the image formed in the mirror is always virtual. Is formed as is formed as for being the mirror and the object in the mirror. Now we have another <coughs> situation here. Let us suppose you have a mirror. What? You have an object. Now I did not have to draw the figure like this. Now I know that. The image is formed as for being mirror like this. So you have the mirror like this, the light goes like this. Now this comes. Now this is incident ray, this is reflected ray. And how are the details? Now we know that this is formed, forms an image here. So here therefore, if I take another mirror M2, see this, observe this carefully, light goes like this, comes like this, falls here on the second mirror, comes like this, comes like this. Now you have reflection, reflection, so two reflections are there. Now for this mirror, carefully observe, incident ray, reflect. The image is virtual. The object is here. Image is virtual here. Now, for this mirror, this has become incident ray. Incident ray means the ray that falls. We don't mind where it from where it comes. So this falls here, therefore incident ray. This is corresponding to So if you keep your eye here, you see an image. So for this reflection there is an image, for this reflection there is an image. You can generalize this, there are as many images as there are reflections. So multiple reflections means multiple images, multiple images. Now incidentally, incidentally, this image, see if you extend this mirror, imagine that there is there. This will also act as the object but this image is there, an image is there. They are the There will be no more images. But in general, in general, if you have two mirrors, M1 and M2, if you keep an object in between, light going here, falls here, reflects here, several times, how many images are formed? How many images are formed? The image has formed out one by one. Where theta is happening. 
Are you? <coughs> this number, say, is an integer. This is a power. Now this is equal to just 360 by theta if this is not an integer. Like that. So that is what we have here. One more point that we may have to note in this connection is you have, let us suppose, a ray like this incident, point of incidence, normal, angle of incidence, equal angle on the other side, always you have to remember this by writing this figure. Ah, let us see. Now what I do is, so this is the mirror, this is the light. I rotate this about point of incidence. That means I rotate the mirror about the point of incidence to a small angle, to a small angle, like this. this is the rotation. Now you forget this figure now. Now this is the ray now, same incident ray. This is the mirror. You have rotated. Now if you have, let us suppose, the mirror like this, if I have the mirror like this, you rotate, this mirror to an angle, the normal also rotates to the same angle, therefore this is the new normal. It has turned to the same angle as this. Now construct, construct an equal angle. See this is the angle of incidence now. It is I plus theta. Now construct equal angle here on the other side. Now this is the new position of the reflected ray, so P dash. Now what is this angle? Again I plus theta. So here, this angle, this angle, see if I rotate the mirror to an angle, the reflected ray turns, you can see that, see if you have this figure, again that's about, if this is I, this is also I, therefore the angle between incident ray and the reflected ray is I. So this is 2i. 2i. Incident ray the new reflected ray. New angle of incidence. I dash. So it is 2 theta. So this has rotated to 2 theta. Now this will be using in your kilometers. <coughs> Now this is a plane mirror, meaning the reflecting surface, the surface from which light is sent back is plane. It is called plane mirror. On the other hand, if it is not plane, if it is curved, if it is curved, now that is spectral. Reflecting surface is curved. You can imagine a ping pong ball, a tennis ball, football. Get a slice of it. See, this is a curve. It's not a line. It's a surface like this. You have to imagine three dimensional. <coughs> See, this is a curve. Now, this curve can be considered to be part of this. I'm not drawing a circle, it is a sphere. The whole sphere like this. Now, this is the center of the sphere. Now similarly, this is the back of the mirror, let's suppose. Which means, back means, the light falls here. It goes back like that. Now there is another type of mirror. See, this is the back of the mirror. Observe the difference. Now this is part of this sphere. Part of this sphere. This is C. Now if light comes back like this, or falls like this, goes back like this. So we have two types of spherical mirrors. This type is concave. Now center of curvature of the spherical surface is in front of the reflecting surface. This is the surface. Center of curvature of 
the spherical sphere of which this is a part is here behind the refractive surface. <coughs> so C is in front of in front of the reflecting surface, the mirror. And here this is convex mirror. Now Z is behind the mirror. That is how we distinguish. That's how we distinguish. Now there is another term that is used here. See if you have a convex mirror, maybe concave mirror, now you can have let us suppose a concave mirror hatched like this. Now <coughs> the center of the surface. Just as we want the center of the line, center of a figure like this, rectangle, let us suppose like this. If there is a surface like this, this is the center, now that is called core. Core of the spectrum. It is geometrical center. Geometrical center. And P, I have C, I have also I have ordered it. <coughs> center curvature. It is the center, center curvature of the spherical mirror, the center of the sphere of which the given mirror forms a part. So this is center curvature. So these are fixed points. <coughs> See, if you have a mirror like this, observe center curvature is here. If you have a mirror like this, center curvature is here. Now this is P. Don't have P here. Don't have P here. P. These are fixed points. Once you have a mirror, these two points are fixed. Now straight line passing through these two. Straight line passing through these two. Let us suppose like this. Like this. Now that is known as principal axis. Of the mirror, of the mirror, like that. Now here, because these are fixed points, pole is a fixed point, center curve is a fixed point. Uh, this distance is also fixed. Radius of convection. Radius of curvature. <coughs> now there is another point with respect to every mirror. See, for example, you consider once again. Meaning, this is the back of the mirror. Once I write the mirror, immediately you have to write the pole, center curvature, axis. Axis there. Now remember the loss. See, I take a ray, ray parallel to the axis. It falls on the mirror. Where does it go? I have to follow the principle that I have given. This is quantum incidence. Draw the norm. Drawing norm on PS pair is easy. Remember, circle, any point radius is perpendicular to that. So this is center, this, and this is the norm. See, this is norm. This is norm. Join center to any point you want, that will be the norm. So it is easy to draw the norm. Measure the angle of incidence. Construct the equal angle carefully. Now draw the reflected. This is the reflected. Okay. This is the reflected. Draw another ray. Draw another ray. Repeat the process. Point of incidence. Draw the normal. I draw the normal. So angle of incidence, angle of incidence, reflection. So this is how it goes. This is how it goes. Now take a ray coming like this. Repeat. Normal I R. This is the So this you can draw.
draw any number of parallel rays, rays parallel to the axis. They all meet at this point, which is on the axis. That is called the principal focus. Principal focus. <laughs> now, there is another mirror, the convex mirror. See, this is the convex mirror, back of the mirror, over of the mirror, that is the geometrical center, center curvature, like that. Now, incident, repeat, this is point of incidence, draw the normal. This is the normal I, R, so this is the like this. I take another ray, parallel. One, two, no. This is the normal I, R, reflect it. Now produce this, produce this. Now this is actual path. This is virtual path, right, really doesn't go there, but it would have gone if there had been no, <coughs> see, this is the image. So, race parallel, race parallel, after reflection, meet at that point, from that point is what it falls. Now, here, see, th this is the focus, now, this distance is called focal length, focal length, by small letter. Distances are small letters. Points are capital letters. So here P, C, F. Now this is F, this is R. Now we have here, see what we call the sine convention. Sine convention. Sine convention is quite important here throughout the objects. Geometric objects in particular. See here, you must be familiar with the notation used in coordinate geometry or analytical geometry. So there, see we take distances measured to the right of y axis positive. Distances measured to the right of y axis positive. Distances measured to the left of y axis we take negative. Similarly, distances measured above x axis are taken positive. Distances measured below y axis, x axis are taken negative. All distances are measured from the pole. This is the starting point or reference point that we call it. Now, similarly, here we have a notation. Namely, say if you have a concave mirror, we define pole, we define central curvature. We have the concept of focus. Now light comes here, passes through here, like that. Now these are the distances here. R, distance of center curvature from the pole. Distance of focus from the pole. See, like this. Notice this. So we measure all distances along the axis from the Four. So this is the reference point. We measure along the axis. Now this distance of C from the four is plus R. They are taken positive. Please note they are not positive. They are not positive. They are taken positive. Now this is also taken positive. Now as against this, you have concave mirror. Note. This is four. This is C. This is a focus, a ray falling on the mirror, like this, goes back like this, as if it comes from here. So here, measured from the pole along the axis, this is negative. Measured from the pole along the axis, this is And one more. The distances above axis positive, 
below the axis. See, it's negative. That means if you want to measure, if you keep an object here, suppose. Now I measure like this. This is positive. Now the image is formed here, suppose. Image is formed here. Now this distance, see, you measure from the axis, below this, therefore this is negative. Distance is above axis, positive. Below axis, negative both distance. So that is what we have for the day. We'll continue next time. Subscribe now and press the bell icon. Never miss an update.